Hey guys, my guest for you today is a close friend, Nate. He sold his online business for more than seven figures and then used that money to then invest in other projects and create multiple streams of income. So in this podcast, it was more like a conversation with a friend where I just wanted to know what he was actually working on selfishly so I could see how I could model him and maybe if there was ways that we could even partner up and work together. So if you want like an enjoyable episode where I'm just like hanging out with a friend and we're just talking, this is for you. If you're into like the logic, this might not be for you. Uh, so just check out a different video, but sometimes the Wi-Fi cuts in and out cause he's in Thailand and I'm in Bali. Uh, but overall the conversation was amazing. So I just wanted to put it up here. So if it helps somebody else, like it helped me, uh, then it could help you out as well. So guys, thank you for checking out this video. Check out a bunch of the links in the resources below if you wanna make your first $2,000 this week or if you wanna get on a call with me and I'll see you guys on this week's podcast. Dude, man, how are you? I'm good, man. It's been, Glad, uh, it's been a while. I know. How's uh, how's Bali? It's good, man. And all, honestly, like it's one of the best places I think to get stuck at. Is is it the same right. in Chiang Mai? Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's really nice here, actually. <laughs> um, you know, not uh, everything's open. Everything's like, you know, Thailand's all good. You can't you can't come or leave. I mean, you can't come in, and if you leave, you can't come back mm. but um yeah it's good i mean i've got a good like it's been super chill and productive mm. um are you in the same house that you were before because no i ended up moving um to the other part of town and uh, we ended up just like getting this villa it was like me mike chang and my friend that runs google ads and then like so much crazy stuff happened uh where yeah. like like we literally got it a month before everything happened. And then just like the prices around the, for the even nicer villas just got like slashed. Uh, so cheap. So we were like, man, we should have just waited a month. Mm. Yeah. Well, cause I mean, M M Mike Chang is in uh, America, right? Yeah. He got stuck in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, not, it's crazy. Not where, uh, I mean, would it want to be stuck in America yeah. or Texas. Mm. <laughs> yeah, um, dude. I wanted, but, uh, I wanted to get you on this uh, call, dude, because I was actually looking at a bunch of your Facebook posts and like you put out some really good stuff, man. Like I've been, I've been really enjoying like all like the posts and, and stuff that you've been putting out on Facebook. So I was like, man, you know, it's like, I know Nate, uh, I see him all the time doing all like the spiritual events here in Bali, but but like, I, I don't think I've actually fully had a, a deep conversation on like, like I know your, your past when you were like traveling and it was like 2012 or 2013 and you were like figuring everything out. But it's like really interesting because when I see you and I see the things that you were like posting, I see that we have the same personality types, but the way that you're able to combat the weaknesses that come with our personality types is is just very like inspirational and it's something that like i look up to so i just wanted to be like wow man yeah. i need to i need to get nate on a conversation yeah. and talk well i appreciate that and yeah that's uh i mean something that i've kind of committed to like recently is is like publishing every day yeah and um you know a co like it's mostly as an experiment and i mean i don't really have like I mean, I have some ideas with it, but it's just like, I want to work on my writing. I want to, you know, work on storytelling. I want to like, like, yeah, just kind of share more and put some, you know, stuff out and see what happens. Mm. And uh, so appreciate the, appreciate the feedback and, uh, you know, glad that, um, yeah, glad that, you know, some of it's kind of been, been resonating. Mm. Um, and, and yeah, I guess, and, and if it, you know, got, got us here, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, happy to, yeah, jam chat at kind of whatever and i mean i don't know how you usually do these but you know yeah i don't know always down to chat and, and also i'd say likewise i mean love all your stuff like i i, I opted into some of your like i've seen some of your ads and i'm you know opted into some of your your mailing lists and like i love your uh you know it's like you've got 
your own unique voice in you know how you communicate and you know whether it's in the the you know ad copy or you know your, your mailing list and like it's it's very you know authentically you and mm. i like that i mean it's it's like it's different than a lot of the other you know i think like yeah it's like you clearly have your personality that mm. you know comes through in your you know messaging and like i'm sure that's what you know other people like about it also and uh yeah i i also uh enjoy everything that you're putting out yeah i toned it down a lot i remember when i first started like uh doing email marketing and stuff like that when i was like really writing all of them myself i would just went too far overboard and 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 i would really polarize everybody like i remember some of the headlines was like insert name i think about you in my sleep or insert name i think about you while i shower and then just to take that shocking headline and to just switch it into something that they got value and then they could you know take the call of action that was like the funnest part um i'm really curious is it your wi-fi or my wi-fi that's it's kind of like all right yeah you uh in, in inspired me to uh hey. yeah co 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 <laughs> change. It's, a, it's a little a little warm in here and yeah. uh i guess uh yeah it's like you know normally mm. i don't know i guess doing um i don't know i mean i like that that's like with your it's like it's very casual like i like that i mean you know also business and all that kind of stuff too but like yeah it's again you know i mean mm -hmm. i think in our own ways similar we're like you know we're both, both posting you know business stuff as well as you know shirtless selfies and handstands <laughs> yeah. and, you know, uh, yeah you're which, like my uh, person bro like like if we're, we're like each other's spirit animals almost you know yeah yeah i have a lot of uh and so so dude i mean what's like uh i mean are you like really working on the the blogging and i mean i saw your stuff on on like i guess helping others to blog is that kind of what you're um so you it's know, like, like it's the, like really interesting where uh like my brand is going uh so the people that we're actually attracting through all of our paid ads is uh women ages 25 to 54 in like the biz op making money online space which is like interesting because i'm like whoa usually that's not my demographic like a they, they, they see some uh, hot piece of meat and uh <laughs> oh man no it, it, and yeah they just like come in so we've just been asking them what is it that they want what is it that they want and then on the back end of things we would j then just partner with the right product creators or just like giving them more of what they want right so when the pandemic happened and everything that happened for with my brand this year compared to last year it was really just kind of like pivoting and just finding new ways to communicate better and serve like the new coming audience. Because I think this is something we're more excited about because before, you know, people would come in like males, 18 to 34, they would buy like a one-off product and everyone's marketing to like the 18 to 24, 34 males in like the make money or biz op space. Right. Uh, but like what I find is like women, 25, to 44 oh well you can still i mean curious i mean yeah i guess got you know cut off saying how you're you know better focusing now on uh you know on like the the biz ops female demographic and so yeah. that's kind of the i guess that's what you're you're doing now yeah i think maybe to become like the matthew hussey for women but for business <laughs> So I'm like yeah. thinking just be like the Abood person, but teaching people that are women that have like a high affinity to want to move to Bali, um, but don't know how to teach them like digital marketing. So it's like a really interesting niche that I never thought I would f like fall into, you know? Uh -huh. So, I mean, is it a lot of, I, like, I, what's the main thing you're selling now? now? Is it like start your own, like I saw something about blogging that i know you published recently is that like what mm. you're pushing or so so there's like different things that come in so they go into like different buckets uh based on like what actions they take on the back end so ideally what it is is we're getting a bunch of data from them and and i'm talking to a lot of the audiences that are coming in uh just on calls like this because i'm like okay what's your pain point what are your biggest challenges just seeing like who the avatar is and uh -huh. right now the main offers are just really affiliate marketing courses, uh, like, like us recommending other people's courses that are either affiliate marketing, which was the big one and, uh, teaching them how to start Who, their own agencies. 
Who's, whose courses are you recommending? So one of them is Gary. I don't know if you met Gary Kramer. He's up in Ubud. The name sounds familiar, but yeah. I'm not sure. He does like huge ClickBank uh, JV promos. I think last year they did like 5.3 million in revenue in 14 days. Uh, so it was like <laughs> freaking nuts, right? Uh, that was like one of my first biggest launches with them. Uh, so we have like some webinars in the back end for that. And the other one is another guy that I met when I also met Gary. It's Chris Winters. Um, he has like this big local business agency. And then uh, he started creating this course. One of the podcasts actually blew up with him and me on that. And then like a lot of people just wanted like his way of teaching. So naturally those were like the two products that were the most aligned with the audience. So it's really just two, right? But I don't know. I'm, I'm like trying to see where I want to scale. And I think it's, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to get you on. Cause I was like, okay, I'm a lot of my businesses are cash flow businesses, but like everything that you do is just like, I see the switch that you made after you sold your Amazon FBA business. Right. And you switched it from just focusing on cash flow or like the instant wins of getting paid to then creating systems and teams where you have like project managers and people like handle it. And, and I, I saw like, dude, I, I went deep in the, the Nate rabbit hole of content, right? Mm. I was like, man, this is like so mm. interesting. He's so freaking smart. Hey. I saw a hey, video thanks, with man. you and Riley and you were just doing something as simple mm. as, okay, this is me. This is the project manager. This is marketing, finance, and like just that little structure. And I was like, mm. man, I'm so disorganized because my, my brain thinks of so much ideas, right? And, and it's just, it's constantly just moving. But my biggest problem was I tend to just put more things in my to-do list, which is why like now you could see why all of the things that you've been posting on just like your personal profile, I was just resonating really much with because I feel like my personality and how I'm coping with it is who you were, I think back in 2014 or 15. And I'm just like, how do I get out of this uh, rat race so, of a thing, you know? I mean, so what is like, I mean, what are your teams look like? Cause I know you're working with, you know, you have other people working with you. Like what are they, yeah. you know, what are they doing and what are you doing? So, my problem is, is I'm too much in the entrepreneur type mindset. So I want to just constantly test things and build things and, and do more projects, which, which is really bad for people that are very systems process orientated. Right. So I tend to like come in and break things. Right. So usually how it's set up is I'll think of a business idea and then like everyone is just struggling to just keep up with my fast paced changing in ideas and split testing and breaking systems. So ideally what it is now is I'm just only focusing on, you know, the marketing and like focusing on Facebook ads while everyone else, like I'm not allowed to touch things in the back end anymore. <laughs> and that's just kind of how it was set up, which is good because then I have less on my plate. But for example, if we want to onboard a new project, say we want to partner with like this, business that does high ticket sales and I just focus on the long uh, direct response marketing. Uh, it's like really interesting to just make sure I stay in my lane without taking on more responsibility than I need to. Does it make sense? Well, I mean, what are your, I guess, what are your goals with your you know business and in, in any of this? Maybe that's a, also a, a good thing to, uh, yeah. I think it's, Dude, I, dude, when, when I see you, I see like you had a really good thing. You know, you, you sold your Amazon FBA business and instead of going back into the grind, you leveraged that cash flow that you got in, but you systematized it in a way where you don't have to go through another grind like that again, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, in, in like for me and the way that I kind of think of like every everything and and you know maybe you do or can you know kind of adopt this as well it's just i just 
like I have a really low tolerance now for doing things that I don't want to do or don't think yeah. I like I, I should personally be doing. Yeah. And like you know, so but at the same time recognize the need for a lot of things to be done. Like, yeah. Like it's not just because I don't want to do it doesn't mean that it doesn't have to be done. Mm. And like so so yeah, and I mean that was I mean one of the mindsets maybe of of like you know when you have enough money where it's not i mean like i still want to make more money but it's like yeah. i don't need you know it's like i don't have to do this if i don't want to and and so you know that's been part of it of just like, like knowing the role that i want to play and i guess like have you thought i mean it sounds like you've been going down that kind of a journey but have you i don't know like how much thought have you put into like your i you know like really your ideal role and, and structure for yeah. for you personally yeah i think my my main thing is just really networking and, and writing right so it, as long as i could stick to just networking with people and then writing long form direct response marketing and having everyone else do like the button pushing uh i think that was what would not just make me the most money but everyone else on the team uh but so i'm curious so so you sold your amazon fba business when was that? 2014? 15? 17. So it was a little more than three years ago. Man. Three, three years ago. And when you had that like influx of cash, because uh, you sold it for like seven figures, I think I saw one of like the posts. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you're kind of like in this postpartum depression of like selling a baby. I feel like a lot of people that sell their businesses. What, what were like right. the different habits or things that you put in place to not just go back into the same old ways of what you didn't want to do, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's been kind of an interesting, you know, journey. I mean, like since then, and it's kind of evolved a few ways, but, but coming out of that, I actually like, the, like you know, my, uh, my experience. So like I, I was invested in, so I had a partner who like invested in my business so like i started the business and then um my friend travis is like you know my business was doing well and like you know amazon fba it's like it was selling a lot but i didn't have a ton of money in my bank and like our sales were growing but it's expensive and so you know so he invested in me and then you know down the road then we sold the business and so, so i had that experience of like having an investor partner and that was kind of like in my you know i don't know uh mind space and so so after i had the exit I was like oh like i want to be an investor now and and, and i guess i mean to, to take a step back though i think like what i one of the skills that i really learned from the the amazon business is really like you know team structure mm. or like uh like organizing like hiring and also structuring teams. And so that's maybe what I was like best at. And, you know, we, you know, had this assembly line of, you know, product research, you know, identify the new product and source and import and all these different, you know, checks and this and that, and this whole, you know, system that was, that was going on. Um, and so, so that was, yeah. Uh, I think like that was maybe my, my biggest like learning from that was really like, you know, building an actual organization, you know, I'm, I'm here, the different buckets are here and like under those sub buckets are this and that. And so like, I felt really, really confident in my ability and just like comfortable and kind of like seeing the business as like a machine and seeing like, you know, me as a certain part at the top, but then but this thing that's just like, you know, running and cranking. And so, and so, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I think of all you know, businesses like a machine and, and I don't know, maybe that's my, cause like, I think, you know, me and you are similar. I think, you know, natural personality wise of like outgoing content, you know, networking, like marketing, creative, like who, who we are, you know, personally. Um, and, and I don't know, like at some point, I guess I really still also kind of de developed that, like, like I'm not, I'm not a great, like, I think I'm, I'm a good I'm like, I'm very well organized for someone who's not well organized, yeah. if that makes sense. <laughs> and so, and so like, I, you know, I kind of figured out how to balance that with myself. Um, 
And, and, and yeah, and like that kind of same, so, you know, that carrying over then after I sold the business and it's like looking for opportunities, I'm like, all right, well, like I, like I, I see how to organize businesses to like grow and scale because like I had this, you know, 15 person operation. And it was like a, a lot of freaking stuff, you know, parts of this assembly line, whatever that were all going on that I kind of like, you know, architected. And so, you know, taking that sort of approach to that, I was like, oh, well, like maybe some other people, you know, I could invest and help other people that like, I kind of see this big picture, you know, structure organization and like, you know, maybe that's a way that I could, you know, invest and also add value and like help other people, you know, help another business to, you know, grow like that. And so, so that's kind of just what I was looking for of like, all right, you know, I, I kind of see how to, you know, architect and kind of structure this stuff. Um, and, and so that's like, then, and actually uh, the, like the first business that I invested in and partnered with, it was like, you know, this guy Brent, who was doing, he's basically a freelancer. Um, and, you know, fast forward and like that business is like crushing. It's like, you, you know, about to do, you know, are, we're going to have like close to our first like six figure month. It's like a, an advertising agency. And so it's all like, you know, recurring revenue and it's just been, I mean, it's, it's going well. Um, and, and yeah, like my, you know, I've worked with Brent, you know, and I mean, how I've kind of like helped and advised is just like, how to structure these, how to structure this thing to be able to, you know, really scale it. And now Brent is very much like the, you know, he's the CEO, there's a GM, there's, you know, it's this whole, like, you know, yeah, that business now probably has like 15 people or something as well, but it's like, you know, building it as, as the machine. Um, and so I think, I mean, that's really like the, the mindset, I guess that mm. I've, I've, I mean, I don't know where it came. I mean, I read a lot of books and so like yeah. from some freaking books, <laughs> uh, you know, but, but, but yeah, I mean, so is that what you're trying to do of kind of yeah, like organize no. your business to be able to like, I think that, that, that part is, is so amazing, right? Cause you're like empowering somebody to run something that they're like passionate and running. Right. So it's like, so for example, now for you, if you see usually like a person that has like potential and here's like a good idea, for example, an agency, uh, what would be like your role then, for example, in Brent's case, where you came in, you know, it's like how much of now your capital do you invest into this project? And then where do you draw the line so that you're not too much in the operations of this new project? You know? Yeah. So, I, I mean, like when it comes to like how to structure and organize deals, I mean, that's a whole other rabbit hole that like, I mean, I think is really fun exciting and yeah. like that's an area that i've really i mean i think is really cool and you know how to you know as an investor it's like how do you minimize your you know capital outflow and there's a lot of different ways to kind of structure this or that i mean some you know not that complicated but yeah but i mean so the deal you know there was like a cash down then there was a you know an earn out portion whatever for me to get you know i bought into um you know uh, equity state you know a partner in the business and um and and yeah i mean it was clear from the beginning that like and really the goal i think as an investor as well as if you want to be building this machine to run without you is to like you want to build yourself off of the org chart and so you know you have your organization chart of the different buckets and what needs to be done and this and that and like the first thing is getting yourself where you're just sitting i mean also depends on what your goals are. I mean, if you want to be, you know, if you want this thing to be running without you and like you really kind of focus, you know, I guess it's really being intentional about, you know, you have the org chart that the business needs, you know, so you got your ad and your, you know, customer support, your, you know, marketing, your finance, you know, whatever. And like all these roles need to be fulfilled, but you know, like it starts of being like, all right, like what roles do I want to be playing? If, if any of them, like you don't, you know, you don't have to do anything. And so, uh, you know, starting there of like, well, well, so, so if you're like building the business and trying to build yourself out of it, it's, it's like, what is this org, you know, what does the org design look like? Where am I currently? 
and you know what roles do I need to fill so that I can first move you know move yourself from like all right doing this bucket up to you know the you know CEO where the whole team's doing it and you're just kind of directing overseeing but but then you can also I mean when you're at that point you're pretty removed but you can even like remove yourself from that where you're like not on the org chart and like that's how my role is with the businesses that I'm an investor in like you know uh, we get on calls you know we chat like I, I I try to help but I'm not I'm not like on the org chart and so the business run like I'm not required for any of the business that's running and like so that's I mean so that was the intent and you know the idea when I got involved with rent's business and then also you know the future businesses that I've gotten involved with, but you can do that with your own business as well. Like, mm. you know, you can, you can still just build yourself off the org chart. You just hire other people to, you know, do the different mm. parts. And, and also, and, and I mean, and that being said though, it's like, I mean, so that's cool. Like having, you know, I, I really enjoy, I mean, it's, it's going well. I, I like my, um, you know, it's, you know, my relationship with the different businesses that I'm involved with like it's it's good i like my role i like my partners they're good businesses that's all great but you know then the other part it's like it's important also to like do work that you enjoy and it's like it's not about not doing any work you know it's about doing work personally that like you know you want to be doing where you know gives you energy your unique ability zone of genius you know all that kind of stuff and so that's kind of where like now it's kind of been with like my journey the last few years has a lot of been like you know getting myself like kind of ha having these you know businesses that are running that I'm not involved with that are you know I mean helping where I can but like that are running that don't you know require me mm. and and like that's great but then also it's like all right great so now you know you have you know time and energy to like put into something and like what do you like you know you need to fill that hole i mean i think it's important to fill that hole um because um, like yeah you know you want to like work feels good you know it, it's good to work and you know contribute and work on stuff um and so that's kind of like where you know coming back now to like the the social posting stuff for example like that stuff like i don't i don't have to do it but like it's something you know like i i want to i want to improve my writing um I, I, you know, have these things that like in a similar way, I think to you, like I, I like sharing, I like sharing, I like helping. And, uh, and so that's something that like, all right, like that's like, that's something that I, at least for now, like I personally want to be doing, mm. you know, just like you, if you're, you know, direct response and, you know, making connections, like that's your role. And like, you don't, you know, could you hire someone to do parts of that? Like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure you could. And like, maybe at some point you will, but it's like freeing up your, t it's like, it's like, you know, you want to something that like a, a good quote I heard about like freedom. I think like Jordan Peterson said this or something, but it's like, you want, you want to like, there's two types of freedom, freedom from and freedom to. So it's like, you want to have the freedom from, you know, different obligations that you don't want to be doing or like, you know, yeah, you want the freedom from yeah, uh, you know, things that are going to be that you like have to do or holding you in, in whatever, but then great. All right. So now you have the freedom from, you know, you have time, you have, you know, location, you have, you know, financial, like great. But then it's like, that opens up then the second part of that question is freedom too. So yeah, like you got this clean slate. Great. You have this freedom, but like now, now it's, you have the opportunity to like, like, you know, choose what, you know, what, Mm. responsibilities you put on and like you know be intentional about that because it's not like you know we need to i think it's important like to, to do things <laughs> um and so and so yeah like i don't know kind of thinking about all the businesses as you know their own separate um you know entities kind of machines mm. and like on most of them i'm i'm not on the org you know on the org chart uh but 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 yeah like being intentional that but all right, what role do I want to be playing? Like, what is my, um, you know, yeah, what kind of function do I want to be doing? Mm. Do you have, like, have you thought about the kind of, like, you know, organization design for, for you know, your business? And, like, what are the different, um, you know, I don't know, 
I, I mean, I'm sure you've done it. Uh, yeah. Well, at least like. So it's like really interesting uh, because, for example, I've had like multiple different businesses in the past, uh, but because I wasn't well aware of having the right organizations in place, uh, like there would be like good businesses that were making money that I would just get bored of and I would just like move on to like the next like opportunity, right? And it was just, it's, it's like, I think my entire life has just been making a bunch of money and then getting very impatient and then seeing like an opportunity and then throwing a bunch of that money into that opportunity and just losing all that money. And it's just like constantly, you know, then going back and just grinding, making a bunch of money again, and then like not having the long-term vision and just losing a bunch of money again, being either like too aggressive uh, when it comes to some opportunities that I shouldn't be too aggressive in or being overly cautious in opportunities where I should be more aggressive in, you know? So yeah. that's why it's like, it well, like really intrigues me how, how you set things up. And I was like, fuck man, like I need to start doing that, you know? Yeah. Well, what well, well, kind of, I mean, you know, other question for you is like, what are your, like, have you thought about your, you know, I guess even like financially, like what your goals are mm. on like, you know, what, you know, for example, like, I mean, cause there's a lot of different ways to, you know, there's a lot of different like outcomes financially you can have with business, for example, yeah. you know, cash flow, for example, you know, having a big exit, like, I don't know, have you thought of what your, like the financial outcome, you know, in, in a business, you know, a successful business generates, you know, profit. Yeah. And like, there's a lot of different ways that this could all be kind of structured. But if you thought of like what kind of, you know, financially your, you know, your goals are, and then like how the business, you know, fits into and, and you mm. know, and, and supports those. Yeah. Just probably, I think right now, mostly cash flow. All the businesses you're like associated with right now, are they mostly for cash flow or do you have kind of like big plans to exit on some of them? So, I, for me, um, so after, so I sold my business a couple years ago and then, um, and, and I like, you know, had, had cash, but no cash flow. And then I realized like, okay, like, you know, income is good, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, the income expenses, like that's, you know, I want to more income and, you know, I don't want to worry about my expenses, but like that, that's, that's the goal. It's like, all right, great. I've got enough like i don't my expenses aren't that much to begin with like i don't have big it's not like i need to buy a freaking you know boat or this or whatever <laughs> i mean and i have you know comfortable there's like you know money available if i need to like do a big purchase but it's like all right you know income expenses and so that was the you know one of the, the you know so investing in brent's business like it's a service agency like, like that business is not not i mean it's like that business isn't going to go like this yeah but it is, you know, it's going to go like this and like, it is profitable. Uh, it remains profitable and like it has, I mean, it's been, you know, growing really well and it's, you know, my, you know, my profit from that business is like also growing. Um, and so that was really intentional of like, okay, you know, cash flow. Um, then, you know, to be honest, like I got super deep into crypto. I mean, I think, yeah, we, we both yeah. did. And like, you know, I, I had like, you know, enough money that I, I could have retired, um, you know, didn't, but, uh, but, you know, but I got, I got caught up in like, you know, oh, like my, you know, net worth and, oh, I've got like, you know, at the time, like this much, you know, fucking millions and fucking crypto. And, uh, and, you know, I just got caught up and excited about, oh, like, you know, net worth this big number. And, you know, then of course I held on and, you know, it, it <laughs> went down a lot, but, uh, but yeah, but then that was even like, you know, reinforce that like, okay, like I, I could have, you know, I, I could have, uh, took out a chunk of that invested in, you know, real estate or other businesses. And I, I could have had like, you know, comfortable cash flow for my fucking life. Yeah. But like, I was, you know, I, I didn't, I was, you know, uh, excited about, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All, you know, it was, I was going to sell when I got to five mil and like, like, you know, I, I didn't, so I didn't sell. And anyway, you know, so that kind of like anchored me back. So like, all right, no, like, you know, I want fucking, you know, income expenses and like, and also the income, like not tied to me, 
you know, I didn't want to have to be like working really for that income. Mm. You know, I mean, I, I do a little stuff, but like I didn't, you know, off the org chart. And so, and so, yeah, that's like been the last last few years have been getting in these businesses where it's, you know, it's it's like, I mean, it's not totally passive, but it's you know, it's it's like my obligations are pretty minimal in order to to have, have this income, and now it's coming from you know, a number of these different things. And, you know, no one of them is like making me rich, but you add them all together and it's, you know, uh, you, you know, I get it. Like, and that's not going to make me like millions and millions of dollars, but it is you, like, you know, income expenses and I don't mm. really have to do much for it. And so that was the, uh, so that was the goal with these businesses. And like, it's been going well. I mean, it's like going more or less according to plan. Um, and, and, but then now kind of where I'm at. And, and so like, that was the goal with those was like cash flow with me, not really have, like, I was looking to get, you know, good returns, good cash flow without really having to, you know, be really tied to, to me. Um, and, and maybe some of the businesses will sell in the future, but it's like, mm. I don't know if you build a great business, like kind of like why, I mean, I don't know, like if it's, if it's profitable, if it's stable, like, I don't know, like I just take the cash flow. Like, I don't know why, I mean, mm. I don't have like, there, there are plenty of reasons why to sell a business, but you know, now it's more like, all right, great. This thing's paying me. I'm not doing anything. Like if we sold and I got a big chunk of money now I just have to like find out where I can put that money to like get more cash flow that I already have. Mm. And so, and so, yeah, so that's what like the current business is. But, but now like kind of where I'm at, it's, it's, it's different. Because like I've sort of, I mean, more cash flow is better, and I, I want to like make more money. But that like it's kind of checked, you know. That box is checked, you know, more than it was a couple years ago. Mm. And so it's like, all right, now where I'm like, all right, now I'm I'm like more more interested in the businesses that like, like you know, kind of take a bigger swing. Like maybe it strikes out, but maybe it's eight figures or kind of like going like in all the businesses like they're good, you know, they can be like healthy seven figure know some maybe multi seven figure but it's like none of them are going to be like huge yeah. i mean we'll, we'll see but then it's like all right but it does provide this, this you know a pretty solid like floor in terms of income and financials for myself that like allows me now how to you know i don't know look at something that's going to be you know this and, and and also being you know doing the things that i want to do that also mm. and and like chasing a business that's going to have like a higher a higher upside ceiling mm. and that i don't really have to worry about the cash flow side of it because that's i mean you know kind of kind of have that from the other businesses mm. yeah no i think that's something that i definitely should have done because i i usually just go swing for the ones that are just like that right instead of like the ones that like slowly because i'm thinking i'm so freaking impatient yeah. right and and i need to start it's less with, sexy it, yeah. it's less sexy but i mean <laughs> after five or ten years you know it's like if you fail at all of these hockey stick businesses, you still have this thing that's just like chugging along, right? Like I'm yeah. looking, I'm well, looking, what? Well, I'll say it's like, you, you know, the approach that I had with these businesses, it's like, like, you know, hit a bunch of like singles and doubles, you know, it's like, yeah. all right, these ones, like it's going to be, you know, a, a high chance. It's like a higher chance of like success. You know, it's not going to go to zero. It's also not going to be a grand slam, but like, you know, you stack a handful of these mm. and like it, you know, it, it still adds up. And, and, you know, now it's like, you know, now that that's all kind of there, it's like, all right, like take a big swing. Um, and, and so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how, how I've been approaching it. What, what would you say then your goals are right now and your biggest challenges that are preventing you from getting to that? Yeah. Uh, uh, good, good question. I, I kind of, you know, curious to hear your answer to that as well. But for me now, and so it's actually like the last kind of couple months have been a big, um, it's been a really interesting time recently, actually, because like, I kind of realized a few months ago, like, I mean, first, you know, COVID kind of hit and a lot of the businesses, like there was a lot of, they like took a dip. Yeah. And that was like, kind of like, oh, like what the fuck's going on? And then, you know, now fast forward a couple of months and like, they're all doing great. I mean, like, you know, as good as ever, better than ever, like on a, you know, have good momentum. And, in, and so that's, you know, in the last few months, it's been a lot about like, all right, like what the fuck do I want to do now?
now, and like, you know, what is, you know, next or, you know, in, you know, the next stage or whatever. And, uh, and so a big thing that I kind of realized and like, while I, I, um, you know, over the, 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 my career, I've built some like good skills, a lot, you know, a lot of them around, like, I think team building, hiring, like, you know, organizational kind of structure, I think is like, that's really allowed me, like a lot of the success that I've had has been from, yeah, like how, how I'm able to like, as an unorganized person, kind of like organize the business and myself. Um, but, but then, you know, I, what got you to where you are now is going to get you to where you want to go next kind of thing. And, and so I've been kind of thinking, you know, really diving into that and a lot of like exploration, like, like what, you know, where I want to go next in my life career, like, what do I, you know, how do I need to improve? What do I need to like, who do I need to become in order to have the, you know, career and opportunities that I want, you know, down the road. And, and um, what I, what I realized is kind of like the, one of the things that it, been you know missing from my like business uh kind of like yeah like engine has really been like like the marketing and growth engine Mm. and it's something like i've always like i've always enjoyed marketing like i under you know have always had a pretty good understanding of it but like you know for an amazon fba business it's not about like you know the marketing on amazon is not like you know direct response like moving someone from unaware to aware to, you, you know, cold, you know, cold, medium, hot, like, you know, all this kind of like, you know, traffic and funnel stuff hasn't really been, I, I mean, I mean, like I haven't needed it. Like I, I've been able to get to wherever I have, like without that, yeah. like, you know, like toolkit or kind of having that like capability, either myself or my team. And, and, you know, in most of the, in the businesses currently, like they're, they've all kind of grown just, just like organic organically yeah. and are growing organically referrals you know they you know do podcasts or speaking or whatever and like that they they have been and are continuing to grow from that but i realized that like like you know the one thing for me personally is is building out that um you know that like uh, growth engine that i can use for my businesses that I can use for, you know, I want to do more partnerships and investments and like having this engine is going to allow me to to add the most value, you know, find the best opportunities, have the biggest impact. Um, And and it's also stuff that I like, the more that I've kind of dove into it personally, like, I I think similar to you, like, it's fucking fun. Like marketing, it's the most fun activities that like, like I'm, I like talking about it. I like learning about it. It's yeah. such a creative, it's like creative psychology, you know, all these things that I really just, you know, naturally enjoy and get excited about. And so, so that's where I've been personally, like really, you know, I've been taking this time the last few months of really just like personally, you know, leveling up my own skills and like, you know, I have, I have time, effort, energy. And like, that's where I've been putting it of just like really, you know, learning as much as I can and, and, you know, building out, it's like the two parts learning and then also Mm. building my, like, you know, some things I should do myself, but other parts I don't need to do myself. And so, and so, yeah, yeah, it's been like building out, you know, my like, you know, marketing team with like also my understanding of like, how do we want to, you know, at a high level, like getting confident in like, building out these, you know, cold funnels and different types of Facebook campaigns and, you know, getting people from cold to warm to hot. And like, how do you do this effectively? And, and, you know, getting them into funnels. And it's really, so like where I've been spending a lot of my time and energy has been around like, yeah, Facebook and, and like funnels. And I, I see that as like, you know, the piece that, you know, it's still a, a work in progress, but I've also learned a lot since I've, you know, mm. really kind of dove in and like, and yeah, I kind of see that as like the, the future of where I, I want to be going, you know, personally and professionally. And like, I don't like, you know, some combination of building out this like growth engine for my businesses, as well as, you know, like, I don't know, I don't have, I don't want to build like a huge marketing agency, but like, I like helping people. And if it's like a boutique, you know, finding mm. 
and opportunities to kind of like, I, I like building team. I like marketing and I like building teams. And so, mm. you know, building an engine that can, you know, execute on these things is kind of like what I'm working on now. Um, and, and yeah, and I'd say the biggest thing, uh, you know, the thing kind of stopping it is, I mean, it's kind of just like time and experience. I mean, it's, yeah. it's moving ahead. And like, I, you know, I have different, you know, now campaigns or projects or funnels that I'm, you know, at different stages of building or testing or like, you know, that are running. And so, but yeah, and like, I, I mean, I've learned a lot. I wouldn't call myself like, I'm not at the level of, you know, competence or savvy that I, and when I say me, like me slash my team, yeah. you know, we have a lot, like, there's a lot still to improve, but it's also... You know, it's, it's like on the path. And so I think for me, it's just like, you know, getting more reps, getting more of this experience to be able to like, you know, really build out and improve this like growth engine mm. to use for, yeah, I mean, anything. It's kind of where. Dude, Facebook like, ads is nuts, bro. Like I remember when um, I got started in like 2015 and I was like so afraid to spend $5 right a day because <laughs> it was like. Like I, 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 the before it was kind of like similar to you when you were in Amazon, all my business was, was on eBay, right? I was just like dropped me on eBay and I had like the small Amazon FBA business. Um, and actually this is like the craziest thing. Uh, I was failing miserably on Amazon FBA, right? I was like failing completely miss. I was selling, uh, the things that they tell you not to sell, which is those like grill gloves you know, that everyone wants to sell when they first get started. I was like killing it, or at least I thought. Um, and we were getting like 20 sales a day. Like then we hit like a thousand dollars a day in revenue. And we we're like, this is freaking amazing. And when me and my dad looked at the P and L sheet, we realized we like lost 20 grand from like the entire thing. So we're like, fuck. And we like had all these products that, you know, it's like, it was good on Amazon, but then either competitors would come in um, like something would happen into the listing or the BSR rating where like now it would dip and we had like all this freaking inventory that we had no idea what to yeah. do with. So like my first thing with Facebook ads was to really just diversify the risk with Amazon to not depend on their platform. And that was like the most insane freaking moment of my life. I, I think there's actually an opportunity and something to even solve a pain point for what you were even thinking. Cause now that I'm thinking if I'm having this pain point, there's probably a lot of Amazon FBA sellers that have amazing products that don't know how to get off of, you know, Jeff Bezos's tit and like start their own thing. But I kid you not, bro. It, it was like a freaking movie. Cause we had all this product. We didn't know how to sell. Amazon was sales were just going down. Right, right. We, we were trying to fight it. We were like, okay, maybe if we do more reviews, if we do another Zon Blast, because uh, I think that was the services that we were using back then. Um, and, and of course, like it would fix it for like the time being, but then it would just go back and it was always operating in a place of force instead of like power. If you've ever like read that book, it's like freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and what happened was we were like, okay, let's just move this existing product to Facebook, right? Because no one on Amazon or e-commerce people weren't really doing anything on Facebook. And I kid you not, like the first three months of tapping into Facebook's growth engine was just like disgustingly insane. Like I remember I was spending $5 a day and I was like so scared. All the money that I was making from my eBay business, I was throwing it into uh, Facebook ads, Right. So I was like, okay, you know, I had this eBay business. I was profiting like a hundred dollars a day. I'm like, I'm just going to start putting that into Facebook ads to just learn. So the first week I got it to like a hundred dollars a day in sales. This was around like October. Um, the second week it hit a thousand dollars a day in sales. And I was like, what the fuck? And, and like, I rode all the way to Q4. And I remember there was like a period within those three months of not understanding Facebook ads to then finding a right product and the right sales funnel to bring them to it. Like I remember my dad was freaking out cause he's like, what the fuck are you spending $5,000 a day on? It's a saying yeah. that it, cause it was all on under his like accounts. Right. And I was like, no, it's cool. We're making money. But, but it's insane when you, when you find like the right product and the right infrastructure, I think that's what 
like I'm the most excited about and passionate now is because like ever since doing Facebook ads for so long and having like this growth machine, my biggest problem was you could either be focusing on the marketing and the growth or the product systems and operations. Someone who's like really good at the product systems and operations will usually lack the marketing growth side. But on my end, I have the marketing growth side and I'm like, fuck, just give me something to sell. Mm -hmm. But like I had nothing really to sell. So I would either have to create a product that would not be as much, but then if I'm delivering the product, right, it would decrease my time and effort on the core competency of just like growing. So where I'm at right now is just really finding ways to partner with people who could fix all the backend stuff so I can just focus on growth, right? So for example, my partnership with Chris, I remember coming back home from a Mind Valley event last year in Croatia. I was like, mm-hmm. fuck it. I'm gonna turn off all the way this is like one of my intense extreme personalities. Uh especially like after going to a Mind Valley event where everyone's like all spiritual and they're like, oh you know, it's just like about energy. Let the money come to you. And I was like, okay, there was this one guy, he was like saying all of those things that do not align with your values, stop focusing on them for at least like 30 to 90 days. So I'm like over here, like hashtag digital nomad thinking, oh yeah, like multiple streams of income, Bitcoin, drop shipping, Amazon FBA, pun space. But then I was like looking at all the businesses. I was like, fuck, none of these are my values. So I, I, I just, decided to take him up on his word. And I just turned off every single like income stream just to see like what would happen. It was freaking scary, man. Like to just like be, to, to be used to this certain amount of revenue and then yeah. for your identity to just be like this. And you're like, fuck, you, you start feeling like this scarcity and you want to contract. Uh, but, but I was like, okay, I need to chase these values. I need to chase these values, which led me to podcasting. Right. And I was like, I don't know how to fucking make money from this shit. Uh, And I ended up reaching out to all of like my old friends that I haven't talked to in a while. Uh, One of them was like Chris. The other one was like the unstoppable family. And we started doing podcasts. And and it, it was crazy because each one of those podcasts ended up turning into like the, the fact that it was recorded for the world to see was just like a plus. The real business was what accidentally was created from those conversations, right? Like for example, totally. the podcast with Chris, it like blew up and everyone was like, they, they were DMing him and they're like, we, we want to buy something from you. We want to, and, and Chris was like, I don't have anything to sell you. And I was like, no, we shouldn't sell anything <laughs> because I went to a Mind Valley event and they said, like, just, just focus on giving. And that was literally last year. I think the podcast was in July right? And then people were just DMing him from that conversation that they're like, we want to buy something. And he was like, fine, we'll, we'll create like a program, which is like the program that we're selling now. And when we opened up the cart, dude, it was like, it was like insane. That, that first day, two or three weeks later from that conversation, where I had no idea how, to, how this was going to turn into money or manifest into money. After the time we were done with like the webinar, uh, my friend Hanson was like, how much did we make? And I was like, I don't know. It was like freaking 2 a.m. because we were doing it on the other side of the world. And I remember uh, my friend and my mentor, Chris, was just like, keep on going because he was looking at the sales and I had no idea what was going on. I was like, okay, like Uh, I was ready to go to bed like an hour ago, but if you're doing this, then maybe we should keep on going. And Hanson's like, did we make 10 grand? Did we make 10 grand? I was like, I don't know, how much did we make? I looked at the freaking stats. And in those three hours, we cleared 74 grand. And I was like, what the fuck? And that was like all profit because we weren't spending on ads. But but, but that was, I think, I think the biggest mistakes from that is we then threw it into other expertise, like we, we left our zone of genius, which was Facebook ads, because then Facebook ads was like super profitable. We were getting like two or three X return on cold to people that had no idea who we were. So it was just like spend as much as you can and you can make as much as you can, which is where the growth comes in from 
the video marketing and the ads. But where we mistaken was when our ad accounts got shut down and we took our same philosophy of rapid scaling on Facebook to YouTube and we uh, got somebody on the team that thought that we had everything in the back end set up when we didn't because like everything was just working already with Facebook. Like we were getting like two or three X return without an email, uh, without a email autoresponder or any backend stuff. So we just told him our stats. He assumed that we had everything in place, but we were basing our numbers with Facebook ads on YouTube. And he like, I remember I was in Chiang Mai and I found out that he was spending like 14 grand a day on YouTube to try to make it work. And I was like, fuck. And we, we made some money, but it was like, we lost a bunch of money. And that's, I think the hard part where if you could create a system to get around that, because we always like, for example, for us, we always get our ad accounts back, but sometimes we scale too hard where Facebook is like, what the fuck is going on? And it's, it's, I think if we had a system to, cycle between the ad accounts there would be really no limit to uh, how much i could scale on my end but it's just like all of the things in the back end always break so i think my biggest challenge is when that time comes i'm usually the one that's like trying to like for example our ad account got shut down last week right so we had another ad account running right so if you stop seeing ads for me uh that's probably why so we had to diversify but Dude, Facebook is insane, man. Like, I know if I could find the right product and the right delivery and and someone that could just focus on that, the things that you could do with Facebook ads and marketing and YouTube ad and even Pinterest ads are like insane, right? Yeah. It's just it's it's just you you pick your you pick your battle. Do you want to get really good at marketing but have uh, a, a, an okay product or service? Or do you want to have a, like a really good product or service, but then the marketing is always like depending on referrals, right? Yeah, but, yeah. But where I'm seeing now is if I could partner with like the people that are really good at the products, at the deliveries as, and like the teams, then I think that's the most lethal combination, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, so are you looking for like, you know, new, you know, offers or products that you can, you know, market or like, I mean, I just kind of, I think, I think I would yeah. be open to it. Um, it would, it would really have to depend on if I could think of the right leading up to it and then automating it. Right. So for example, yeah. with this one offer, right. Uh, most of, most of our business is streamlined on two offers, right. So we have people coming in to the immediate ever webinar. And then if they don't make a sale, they go in this uh, email marketing automation where then they get a different offer. And between those two, we'll like 2X our money in and money out. The only problem with the thing right now is because, you know, one news comes out or the world shifts a little bit, people's buying tendencies tend to change change right like like on a weekly basis so when it comes in terms of like figuring out the right funnel it's like with the messaging needs to resonate with the current people at the current times but the times are always freaking changing like every single week there's like a different problem yeah yeah. so the psychology is like different right so um what, what i'm like really good at is creating the mvp to start making money with ads And then what I'm really bad at is getting myself out of that position because I'm usually the person that is the best at creating the sales funnel, the sales copy, the ad copy, the direct response, the automation. But then now, like in terms of optimizing it, like since I built it, I'm like now kind of a slave to this freaking machine, you know? And I'm not Uh patient enough. Like it's actually really interesting because now my sister and my cousin are helping manage a lot of the stuff in the back end, which you should definitely meet up because they're in Chiang Mai, or at least my sister is. Oh. And oh, is she? Yeah, and I think she's friends with your brother. Or yeah, I've, 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 yeah, I've met your sister a couple times. Yeah, um. uh, and 
it's really interesting to have them because they're more process orientated and less risk averse. So they're able to kind of see my blind spots and then we're able to kind of work together. So I think my biggest idea was like, fuck, they're like these women that are good at systems and processes and good with dealing with clients. I was like thinking, okay, what if I just get on podcasts with people that want marketing and then just kind of like be the front end marketing engine that kind of like sells them as an agency. But they're also like in the beginning end of things. So for example, someone like you could come in and just like, like do some crazy things like that. Um, but I don't know, dude, I think there's almost like too much opportunity when you know marketing, yeah. cause you're just like, I want right. to sell I everything. Mean, everything's an opportunity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, it, 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 it opens up like any, and that's been an interesting experience for me as, as I've like, you know, kind of leveled my own knowledge and, and kind of skill set around that is you just see opportunities. Now I see like, yeah. like infinitely more opportunities everywhere where it's like, oh man, like you could build a fucking funnel to, you know, do that. Like that's a cool thing. Like what could that kind of look like? Um, but but yeah, I mean it's I don't know, depending on what your goals are, it's not about, you know, about doing as many as you can. Maybe mm. it's, you know, a few that you can do you know, higher. Um but but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, that, that's cool, man. So, I mean, so you have these kind of like, I guess, what is your, and so the main stuff, it's like you have them coming in and selling them on the webinar, yeah. pushing these different offers. And that's yeah. like, I mean, to your, to your, uh, I guess these 25 to 55 year old biz ops women. <laughs> yeah. But, it, but I'm, I'm like realizing we could really do this for anything. Right. So for example, we're partnering, uh, yeah. with someone that does high ticket sales, right? So I feel like that would be a good bread and butter because a lot of these people that are in high ticket sales, they're usually just solopreneurs. They are really good at serving. They need, they, yeah. what, what? They need to learn a lot of things. They, they need to learn. There's a lot of things yeah. that they need to learn. And then like, but, but when you like, if, if you have like an e-commerce product uh, and you create a funnel around that and you have like the delivery in place or like a high ticket phone to close, Funnel, I think those would be like the two most lucrative and most ROI uh, focused businesses, right? So if I was going to yeah, look to yeah. partner with anybody, it would be, it would either be someone that has an existing agency and systems where they wouldn't break, right? They could deliver. They yeah. yeah. Uh, so service-based businesses would work well as long as they're higher ticket or you could charge like three yeah, months it's, up front or it's, it's hard though with that. I mean, like agencies, they're, they're hard to scale, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's possible, but it's just like too human you know, intensive. It's really, yeah. I mean, and you can have good hiring, you know, funnels and training and all this kind of stuff, but it's still like, it's hard to like throw, you know, 10 people at a time, yeah. you know, it's, and so, I mean, but, but I get what you're saying though, but I think like, I mean, I have friends that are doing kind of like hybrid, hybrid, I mean, they, he calls it an accelerator kind of thing where it's like a course with some, yeah. you know, coaching kind of thing, kind of like Sam Ovens, you know, yeah, model Yeah, like Russ Ruffino. Uh, uh, I'm not familiar with that, but, but yeah, I'm sure, I mean, a lot of people I think doing it, but where yeah. it's, yeah, it's like a, you know, 6K, 8K offer and it's a course with some kind of, you know, coaching component thrown into it and like you know i mean you only got to sell so many things that you know eight k a pop yeah. to be <laughs> um yeah to, so but yeah and also i think like the e-com stuff too and that stuff like in my i mean i think like when i think of like the the big business opportunities for like i don't know i, I mean for me and you know probably similarly it could be for you like the people that I know that have the biggest businesses, you know, multi eight figure, um, you know, even nine figure, maybe like the fucking epic econ brands. Yeah. Like I know actually you know, like, like I know a lot of people with, you know, multiple seven figure, eight figure, multiple eight figure econ businesses. And like, I mean, it, part of it's like selection, you know, whatever bias that like, I just happen to, you know, I don't know. Those are like, the, the industry that I'm, you know, that I'm, I'm also plugged into and know people, but like, I know way more, you know, eight 
your e-com businesses than, you know, agencies or, yeah. I don't know, you know, for example. And so, and yeah, and to your point of like, I mean, I, and I think like, you know, I, I know a lot of even like marketing agencies that work with e-com brands and like, you know, it, it's scalable. You know, you get something, it can, it can really ramp up fast if you Dude, have a good, with one you know, product, like with one product funnel yeah. on Facebook ads, you could, you could, like there's this, uh, Scale. there's this one guy, he scaled this, uh, they have like this this product that would do well, well on Amazon FBA. So this would be like a dream product that I would want to even like play around with to do some Facebook ads to just test it. Uh, but what it is is like this, like this beer drinking thing game or whatever. So those do well on Amazon, just like any games or like stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um, he built a funnel around it, sending traffic to the product. And dude, they they. I think their highest, they did 8 million in the past 30 days on one product. And then just like yeah. accessory products, the funnel was just to that one thing. Right, so right, right. I, th- I think the big opportunity then would be to do like these hyper growth strategies for these e-commerce people that are maybe at the six or seven figure mark. And then just because they're so good at the back end with like the product quality, the customer service, like all like the, the umbrella for that product to come in and to just do the marketing for them and just right. Right. And scale it. Yeah. And then to get like a percentage of that, it's like you're now t- tapping into all of these high potential markets and products while also like mitigating your risk, but working with like really dope people, you know? Yeah. Well, I think that, that's the, you, you know, the power of, if you, if you control that marketing engine, you know, yeah. you have it for your own products, you know, you can partner with other people and like, you know, I mean, there's so many ways to structure things. It doesn't have to be like, all right, you know, and, and you know, the opportunities that I'm interested in, it's not like, okay, like pay me X thousand dollars and I'll set up this funnel for you. It's like, all right, cool. Like, you know, let's split the cost. And if this crushes, let's yeah. split the profit. And like, you know, when you control that, that opens up so many of those opportunities. Um, other e-com thing, I, I'm guessing you probably know him, but I've been hanging out in, uh, in Chiang Mai with, uh, you know, uh, John Yoom or, you know, Vroom e-com. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, dude, he's the man. I, I mean, he like, I mean, the best, like, probably like the best, you know, Facebook e-com dropship person mm-hmm. that, that I know personally. Um, and, and yeah, but it's all these, you know, these like, you know, single product e-com funnels yeah. and, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, so that's something that I think like, I mean, for me, like that's kind of, I think like the opportunity to make, uh, you know, a multi eight figure business is, is e-com I think. And it's kind of like, I think that's the, the highest ceiling of, you know, what I know and kind to have access to and kind of familiar with so that's kind of like you know i don't know at some point i think that's the that's the move but but it's also like i mean yeah uh, ideally you know um consumable something whether yeah. it's like a like something you build something. a brand think, like yeah yeah legit build a brand that you could you know those you can sell for like for like you know uh, a, a lot of money <laughs> but you you like have a um, network where you probably have a network of a lot of people selling like some type of supplement but they're just fully dependent on Amazon and they want yeah, so, so, like a way yeah, out. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's tricky though, because like a lot of people are selling like $20 supplements on Amazon and like, that's tough to, you know, to really make work or scale on, uh, you know, on Facebook. I mean, also that being said, I haven't really tried it, but like, that's the thought is a lot of these people that I know, I mean, when I'm thinking, and you might have different experience, but if I'm thinking of like an ideal e-com, you know, product offer to scale on Facebook, it's going to be something like, I don't know, more expensive, you know, like 50 to $80 or something of like, you know, uh, an individual one, one unit of like, you know, 50, 60, 70 bucks or something. You can also buy multiple to get the AOV to like a hundred mm. plus, you know, you can kind of like, I've been paying, I don't know if you're that into or familiar with like the affiliate marketing kind of space and like some of their e-com products but these are ones that like these these scale 
And like there was, you know, there's a kind of formula of a lot of these ones that they, you know, these do like a, a friend of mine's, uh, he's a, a media buyer and, you know, he ramped up this one product. Like it was, an, you know, he using native, native traffic that like over the course of a week went from, from nothing to like, you know, 10 sales, 50 sales, a hundred sales to a fucking thousand sales a day <laughs> like in a week of this like portable air conditioner it's like a mini i mean i think the product's kind of a you know the quality is is maybe a little questionable yeah I that's what it is with those consideration <laughs> yeah it's like you know it's selling for like 80 dollars, and maybe it's it's you know worth 20 but you know i mean if you have mm. a good marketing you can kind of sell it but but yeah but those are the things that they you know they, they really scale these um you know yeah and you know getting into affiliate stuff i mean that's a whole other like channel but you need to, in order to get affiliates you need to be able to like pay out a high, high enough cpa in order to have a high enough cpa you need to have a high enough you know uh you know ltv aov whatever like if you're paying out 50 dollars per action you need to obviously make more than that per every you know purchase or you know every customer and so mm. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it's complex, but it's a lot of, um, do you see, you know, there's yeah, just like too much stuff. opportunity, right? It's like, it's like, which one do you want to sink your teeth in for the next like couple yeah. of years? Well, what, I mean, so like, what, what are you most excited about then? I mean, there are a lot of, you know, opportunity like, what, what are you most excited about? Dude, like if, if, if I had it my way, I would just podcast and, you know, go to, spiritual entrepreneur events you know like maybe check out baby bathwater uh go to burning man a couple times sure. just continue uh, networking and and maybe focus on writing uh that's kind of the biggest thing but then also is is, is it really like you, you like podcasting going to events writing like that's what you want to be doing yeah podcasting writing and just like growing right and then documenting things so if I stem into that and then like keep on writing and just focusing on direct response marketing and just making like some type of ads and then, and then I think with all of like the expertise that I've figured out up until this point, it's like, it's usually just me and then some other people on the team. But I feel like if I put myself in the right rooms with the right people and that have the right um, complementary skill sets, then yeah, all, that's all, where the all we would the, need is like the right business vehicle and it's like you can almost make anything work i think it's either uh, my biggest problem is you know it's like right time right place right people right product usually i have like two or three but when you have i think all four it's it gets pretty right, insane that's like yeah well that's i mean i'll say from myself and it's funny you said about the podcast and uh and i also i i launched a podcast a couple of months ago about um it's like kind of like in the e-com space yeah. and um and yeah i mean kind of to what you're saying it's like you know getting yourself to into conversations with the right people like that's the biggest benefit and whether it's with a podcast or at a baby bathwater event or mind valley or like you know whatever it's really just about um yeah, you know, like connecting with the right people. And, um, and, and that's where the best, I mean, when I think of, you know, my career, all the best opportunities have come, you know, because of or with some person that I happen to connect with through something. Mm. And like, as you level up your, you know, your own like skills and abilities that only creates more opportunities for more, you know, collaboration, yeah. connection kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So actually had a, uh, uh, curious your, your your thoughts are kind of if you have any ideas on something and so you know with my i'm in the midst of this kind of writing publishing you know just you know doing it for i don't know the quarter or however long and um like you know i don't really have like you know the reasons i'm doing it to like improve my writing you know share more kind of connect more all that kind of stuff but i do have like the ideas of having some sort of an offer or funnel like you know at you know add some sort of an offer or back end like in that and like do you have any ideas of just like you know how you like how you see me or like what you see from what i'm posting of like mm. 
I don't know, like if it's a program or a something that like, you know, combination of everything you know about, about me and see that I'm posting of like what you think could be interesting as like, and, 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 you know, it could be a low ticket. Like, I don't know. I'm not attached. It's not about like, it's, 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 it's less about like the volume of money and more about like having some type of a follow-up, like actual offer that maybe it's for, you know, $40, maybe it's 4,000 or, you know, whatever, but just like having a, a, like a, some type of a, you know, business offer, you know, kind of growing into or being able to promote something like that. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go low ticket. Right. Uh, because I think that would not attract the right people to you. I think with your expertise and your quality, you should either be focusing on like some type of high ticket six to like eight week group program of like helping them from where they're at to like potentially outsourcing themselves like, out of the, like, I think that org chart is like one of the most interesting things. So you might maybe have a lot of six figure or seven figure entrepreneurs following you, but they're mm -hmm. so deep into the org chart. So like a six to eight week program of, uh, them paying like, you money to them get themselves out of the org chart. Cause ultimately, uh, like, for example, when I see you and let's just say I'm your prospect and you're, you know, trying to sell me something. The thing that would appeal to me most is really to just get out of the freaking org chart. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and if, if I'm feeling that and I'm someone that would be like one of your clients that you would want to, you know, prospect, then reverse engineering it, it's actually really interesting because the program could be getting out of the org chart, but then the high ticket in the back end could essentially just, you're also building a funnel for future investment for ideas sure. and partnerships, yeah. which I think is a freaking awesome funnel. I think I want to yeah. like, I, I think that's where I'm also moving my stuff too, because I realize after talking to all of these people that are starting businesses, you know, like I'll, I'll talk to some six figure entrepreneurs and I'll tell them something simple that is very simple in my space because that's just what's normal in my space compared to how your knowledge in your space is just normal. Like there's also like maybe hundreds of people in your space right, that right. know it, but you tell someone in like a different industry and they're just like, what? Like I remember I was uh, talking to this girl, she's 24 years old. She built a business teaching people disability, uh, educational services like reading and writing. And she's killing it. She does like, uh, she does like 15 grand a month and she's just using zoom. And, and she, she's like, she has more clients than she can handle. Like I got on a call with her for an hour or two and we just mastermind on how she could improve it. And from that hour, uh, conversation, she like increased. Um, she closed like two deals that brought her an extra, like two grand a month in revenue on a different model as opposed to charging hourly. And I was like, fuck, this is a, this is a, she was like, I was mind blown. And I was like, fuck, this is like common knowledge in, in my space. But for her, it was like life changing totally. and, in her, and in her yeah, industry, yeah. no one, none of her competitors will know what to do and why they see if they ever model her, why, how is she getting all these new ideas? It's not just that they're new ideas. They're just from a different industry. Right. So I, yeah. think, I think that's what excites me the most is finding those people that are at like six or seven figures in one industry, but then applying your knowledge right. from a different industry and making yeah. them kind of like blow and up. Is, is, is that like with your, audience and the people you know your your customers are they like I, I guess in a bunch of random different kind of industry stuff is it kind of like that there are i mean are, are some of them doing like six figures in you know random different stuff or is it more they're trying to get from you know zero to starting yeah. their business so in the beginning i thought it was just mostly mostly for the beginners like someone who's never done anything online uh, but when we changed up some of our marketings, we're finding that we're actually attracting like actually really smart, awesome, like women that are either successful at their jobs. They have like a six figure business or, you know, they work for Microsoft and they also have like a yoga shell at the side. It's really interesting. It's like 
they all follow Quality people yeah. they, they all follow like deepak chopra they're into spirituality but they're like the grounded spirituality so i'm like frick this is this is going to be like, as long as i stick true to this core audience and not get blindsided by the instant profit of marketing to yeah. males 18 to 24 just for like the quick profit but i think if i could build like a community around this it's it's like it's like you're attracting all of like the high level bali women entrepreneurs that aren't just you know at a static dance but are actually like killing it right but it's like yeah and like they're they're, they're like they have like skills and value yeah. from their life experience experience in whatever different areas that they're trying to like, like you know turn into a business yeah and i think that's where the there's a huge opportunity because you know women in general in the business space and this is what i'm seeing just from researching like they there's not really like a place for them to like learn business without like the person teaching just being super sales and market, like, yeah, you just got to sell. Like there, there's nothing that has really resonated with them. So if I'm looking at like the, uh, interesting. the yeah. blue oceans, right? Like you see like Matthew Hussey, he's like a man that teaches women dating, right? And he's like exploded, right? Hmm. I, I was like, I was like looking at some research. There's this guy, Dr. Mike, uh, he, he teaches women health. Right. And my mom follows him and I'm like, what the fuck? Just cause he's like a young dude and he is like somewhat charismatic. So I'm hmm. like, fuck, maybe this is the opportunity yeah. in the biz op space. And yeah. it's just awesome to be surrounded by amazing women all the time. Like imagine doing it, events it, and you're yeah. like, this is dope. Dude. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a couple ideas. So stuff that I've thought about and like, you know, as I've been, um, you know, just kind of trying to hone my own, you know, writing and, and really like personal branding and like there's a lot of different like I, I mean one of the things that i've thought of is like it's 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 quite intentional of yeah. you know um like you know there's a, i guess a process of like all right defining you know what buckets am i talking about and like what kind of different like there's a there's a system around mm -hmm. the the sharing and um have thought about you know, you know that as like and other people sell that kind of a thing but i think like for the audience that you know you're talking to like that would be a really valid you know it's like all right so they've got this skill and experience but i'm actually i have a, a friend that i'm you know exploring i mean she's like we're in the same burning man camp together mm. and she's like the most amazing parent that I, like she's so i mean she's an amazing impressive in like so many ways and like you know her thing like she's she's uh like had kids when she was pretty young and you know now her kids are you know like 17 and 20 and she's like you know low 40s and like has this i mean incredible relationship and you know how she approaches it and everything with her kids and like yeah and like that's something you know kind of talking with her about you know it's like kind of like how to position yourself through your you know content and sharing is like the first step of kind of like getting the right system to, to you know present yourself in the way that then you know leads that into your, you know, business and offers. And like, I mean, it's like, you know, it's kind of starting it organically and then, you know, kind of like start and validate organically. And then you kind of, you know, scale with paid. But I think like some type of a program for, you know, these, it, I mean, I don't know, you tell me if you think that would kind of resonate with like these women that you're talking to about how to, you know, it's like how they, you know, define and structure their own, like, you know, mm. brand and sharing to then turn that into a business to like, you know, create offers, whether it's mm. coaching info, you know, whatever. And then, you know, the last step is like scaling with, you know, yeah. Facebook and paid ads and, yeah. and stuff like that. What I'm like that. learning, um, is, is there's like this, uh, exponential thing on the back end, or like, for example, when you sell a business, if it has this aspect, it has a higher multiple. So most of the people that I know that, do like the the high level high volume paid traffic to a product is it's usually kind of like like a one night stand thing right like the the value is given until the purchase happens and then you know the lifetime value is like so and so because you don't have like this raving fan right uh but then you you have like if i was going to model some e-commerce 
businesses is you have one person that comes in from the front end, but then now they're just a customer for life. And, you know, they keep right, on buying right. the supplement. Their uh, lifetime value is like four grand or something instead of like 40. And then knowing that if, if you're going to have intention with your marketing and you see like the entire journey for you want to, where you want to have them end up in. And that's kind of like what I'm seeing, like all my friends that are killing it. Like I have friends that are spending 20, 30, 40 grand a day to their 997 products. Um, and, uh, and the value really just comes in the front end, but you know, the entire journey, cause all these people, if they're going to invest in that, they're going to want to grow. What I see like the big opportunities almost pulling like the mind Valley route where you get them in into like a, like a front end, which is like the offer that basically gets you paid for acquiring more customers, right? So you're profiting every right, time right, you get a customer, right. but then you find out their problems their challenges, their pain points, and you create like, like a lifetime journey, All ecosystem. like an ecosystem, yeah, yeah. like what Mind Valley did, uh, like Mind Valley, I think they're, they're about to break a hundred million a year and all they're doing is simply just ads to an ever webinar. Right. And then the thing um, that keeps them sticky are their events, their community, uh, their right. tribe. They, they, they get them. There's, there's one like entry point yeah. offer and then they have the whole, um, yeah. But I think that would be so, so freaking that, dope to do that. Like, like to kind of do what mind Valley did, but like a spiritual entrepreneurship thing, tying those two together, and then focusing on these women because all these women like are craving spirituality and entrepreneurship, but they don't want to do the traditional ways of making money online. Um, and all the things out there is just like, oh, you have to do job shipping, you have to do Amazon FBA. And they're telling them that, okay, what opportunities you see might actually like, don't do that because Amazon FBA and Shopify is what you need to do to make money, right? But to then to yeah. like support them and then get them to that, do a bunch of events. It's like you're drop shipping Bali to the entire like world, you know? I, I think that would be an awesome yeah. business idea. Yeah. Dude, that is a it's an interesting niche and it's interesting as yeah. it's like I guess there's different advantages or you know, pluses and minuses of being like, you know, uh, a you know, male serving the female audience or you know vice versa of like uh i mean yeah uh, i think there's yeah i mean th i th think you're onto something there and it's like a fun uh you know a good a good niche to serve and there's a lot mm. of different benefits i mean you know being Dude, surrounded um, by amazing imagine, beautiful women like. imagine doing an event right like you, do you ever get sick and tired of going to marketing events and it's usually just like a bunch yeah. of just old, old men dudes. And then yeah, the yeah, crypto yeah. one was fun because you see a bunch of like, like old people, unhealthy people, and just like sexy Russian women. For some reason, that was kind of yeah. like the two people. But the demographic. Yeah, I think if I was gonna reverse engineer, because like a business is like a vehicle, right? And and sometimes even though the money comes, it attracts like a different environment. If I was gonna reverse engineer my life. I would want to just be surrounded by amazing, authentic, heartfelt people that were spiritual and that I could do business with. So if I was going to think about and be intentional with all of like my paid ads is, okay, yeah. even though I'm acquiring a customer now, how can I then also not just do it for the immediate win, but that win that's like five years down the road of creating this right, like right. environment right. around me, you know? Yeah. Sounds a uh, sounds like a pretty fun, you know, path. And that's the other thing of like, you know, when you have the just like the, you know, direct response acquisition Facebook like like competency, you know, it, you can just direct that at anything, you know? And it's just yeah. like, all right, like who do I want to target? Okay, like these, you know, like I've got I know who I'm speaking to, I know how to access them, I know how to engage them. And like, you know, you could you know you just can do that like mm. it's uh yeah i mean lots of uh possibilities opportunities mm. as well well dude um i mean yeah uh i'm into it and, 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 and i appreciate the idea of like the um you know if it was some program of like you know uh build yourself off the org chart kind yeah. of thing and like i'm actually gonna i mean yeah i'm gonna like 
put more content out kind of around that. And, and Dude, yeah, yeah that's I mean, the one I that know, I we'll really that. resonated with because I think, I think not just financially beneficial for you, but even like I think you finding fulfillment is, you know, it's like you have someone like, for example, I was like watching your video with you and Riley and Riley is like, wow, mm. I didn't think about that. And he was like really looking up to you and, and like, I was like yeah. looking at this, I was like, fuck. And it's, it's a big pain point, right? You have six and seven figure entrepreneurs that are just like, they, they might have a personality like me or Riley where they're like, I, I just, I'm just grinding on stuck on this grind. Right. And something mm -hmm. that's so simple to you is so foreign to someone like me or yeah. someone else. Uh, and it's always dependent yeah. on my own stuff. Like that, that would be like, I think a lot of people would resonate well, with that. Yeah. I appreciate that. And I'll, uh, I mean, you know, yeah, kind of push on that a little bit and, uh, you know, see, see where that leads to. And, and then the other thing I was gonna say though, is like that, you know, maybe there's some, op you know, you're helping these women to, you know, get from zero to one. And then maybe, you know, we partner on a program mm. of like, then the next step of like, you know, getting them to, you know, more like business owner, as opposed to, yeah. you know, kind of doing the grind themselves. Because I, I I want to surround myself with these, you know, spiritual, <laughs> these women. You know, like, this is a know, funnel, you yeah, know, how, like, you know how you have a funnel to like, uh, prospect more people for your employees. This is going to be like your, this is going to be like your dating funnel too, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've like, I mean, kind of thought about funny funnels you could do with that, but yeah, I mean, wh why not? <laughs> right? Like my Google you know, ads guy, my Google ads people. guy was like, dude, we definitely need to just focus. Cause, cause that's actually really interesting. Um, a lot of women, and I'm wondering why 25 to 54, uh, was, was more converting than even like the younger ones and why it's like more enjoyable. So women actually have their midlife crisis from like 27 to like early thirties, um, which is what I found out because there's a lot of pressure for them to get a kid. So they think like their yeah. biological clock is ticking yeah. and in their forties, what happens is there's like a, like a big change. So it's either their kids leave to college, they go through a divorce, um, they go through something different where they now have to change an aspect of their life. And the interesting about this is you have these women that have income, the older they are, they tend to save more. Um, and after the age of 25, they have, they, they've gone through a lot of things that they realize what they don't want, you know, which is just as important. Mm -hmm. Like when you're dealing with someone that's right. 21 or 22, that's never been punched in the face, they're like, oh, the world is beautiful and everything's good. And it's right. like unrealistic, right? So. Right. That sweet spot of serving anyone above the age of 25, I'm realizing, I'm like, wow, th there's like, th they, they know maturity and like, they know what they don't want, which is like the most important thing. Uh, and when they know that they see someone like you, they're like, wow, you have what I want. I want to get myself out of the orange chart. And it's, uh, and it's like very appealing and you got to serve them at, at a higher level. And the thing about, I think women is the moment they find someone they trust then you just keep on offering more services and products and partnerships in front of right. them, you know? Yeah. I, I, re I recently um, was listening or, or going through Ryan Lebeck's books. Yeah. Have you done his ask and choose? Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, one of the things that I mean, I kind of remember from it is, uh, you know, when you solve one problem for someone that just opens the, you know, you become the, you know, th they trust you. And then that yeah. opens, you know, and when one, one, one problem is solved then that opens up another problem and then who do they look to to help solve that and so it's this like never ending mm. you know if you can if you can like you know nail it and like really help them solve that first problem you know then it's just like there's whatever opportunities down the road to uh you know continue working mm. with them and you know, they just want your help with other things too and so, you know, solving that first problem to like start that relationship mm. to then, you know, like show sure like how Mind Valley does it or, yeah. Actually, like a really good uh, person, like Joe Rogan did it really good, man, with uh, with on it. Uh, but but I think he could have done even so much more, right? So he's doing his podcast, and then you know one of his people, like Aubrey Marcus, is like, okay, I'll I'll take over on it because that's what everyone else wanted. That's what he wanted, yeah. and that grew to like twenty or thirty million. 
dollars a year, but then to continue, I think with, it's more than that. Really? <laughs> I think I'm. A, yeah, I'm like huge. <laughs> but that would be like the dream, right? To just like build the tribe, kind of like what Joe Rogan did, and then ask them what is it that they're already buying, and seeing if you could just yeah. partner with someone who could create a better product. Yeah, I mean, lots of lots of opportunities. There's so much. <laughs> Dude, we're at like two hours. I just wanted to like respect your time and uh, say thank you for yeah. hopping on. Uh, we should yeah. we should definitely do this uh, like like more more yeah. you know because dude I'm yeah I'm down man. I mean I always always love jamming with you. And yeah. Like I think we're you know we're we're similar in a lot of ways, but also have, have some different you know experiences and and you know other value that like oh yeah. That, that, Thing I was going to say about uh, so there was this there was this article I remember reading that stuck with me like you know years ago but it was like some clickbaity headline like you know how to find the best opportunity or like who wins the most in life or whatever and um, the idea though it was about this idea of um, like crossing circles and so meaning that we all become you know we all like become the average of the mm. circles that we surround ourselves with. And so, for example, you know, hanging out with a bunch of internet marketers, everybody knows about this ad or this funnel or this, like that's, that's normal from that crowd. Mm. And so, you know, if you try to, you know, you go to like a big internet marketing event and like, you know, talk to someone about, you know, building a basic funnel, like, you know, like get out of my face. That's, that's old news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. But, 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 but the idea is like, you know, you, you take like where their opportunity is, is when like, you know, you, you take that knowledge from that circle and community and then you cross that over and bring it to another circle community. For example, these, you know, these, you know, smart, spiritual grounded women that like aren't going to the internet marketing events. And it's like, then, you know, you, you introduce like what would be considered a pretty basic, you know, strategy that like over here is fucking mind blowing. And, and it is, it's adding, a, you know, just cause they're not, it's a different circle. And so like the idea, it's like you kind of soak up your knowledge and experience from this circle. And then the, the opportunities is taking that and applying it to, mm. you know, other, other uh, audiences and other circles. And so when I think with that, with me and you, I mean, I think we both have, have you know, certain things similar, but also, yeah. you know, coming from different, you know, there's, there's certainly some overlap, but also some, you know, other, uh, areas that aren't the overlap. And so I think like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, always fun talking and like always get lots of ideas and, and yeah, we should, we should do this more. Dude, and, like, it, yeah. And if you have any know, down problems, to explore whatever, if you have any like challenges or if there's any way that I could serve or add value to any of your projects, uh, just let me know. I would definitely love to help you out in any way, uh, yeah, with that as well. Me too, man. I mean, let's like, I keep this talking. I mean, I really appreciate it. I'm going to, um, you know, yeah, like, you know, put some posts out there around the whole, like, getting off the org chart and kind of scaling mm -hmm. and that stuff. And, and like, I'll keep you updated on the, like, I've got, you know, some of these, you know, marketing funnel kind of projects that I'm, you know, talking to other people about and, and, uh, and, you know, do the same with like this stuff with your, you know, yeah. kind of growing community audience, whatever, like, I'm sure there's ways to, to, Mm. Yeah, help each other collab on, on on something with that, and uh, you know, get ourselves surrounded by more. Or maybe you know, you're you're maybe already doing it. Maybe I gotta like, yeah, do, do more of that of these. Um, yeah, but these, dude, like, imagine awesome. like what it would be like because you know, it's like usually my wealth would be good, but then my relationships would be shit. But then sometimes my relationships would be good, but my, but my wealth would be like very like not good, right? From just like the crazy ups and downs. I'm thinking, how can we create a sales funnel that then just like ch just checks all boxes, right? Yeah. Where financial, spiritual, emotional, love and connection, <clears throat> significance. Um, uh, yeah, dude. And I, I definitely think we need to, like I think if we keep on putting our heads together, we'll figure something out because I think yeah. we all kind of want the same thing. We definitely need to do this again because there are times that you kind of like went in and out and just went like, like yeah, pure robotic, yeah, but I'm I'm down. <laughs> I mean, we'll just pick it up. Where we love. I mean, happy to cover similar stuff, but it can also yeah. get into new stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, it's 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 fun. Uh, like I, I just enjoy this. You know, it's yeah, fun. Yeah. Like, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, cool. So um, uh, we'll talk on Messenger, and uh, 
Yeah, dude. It was like, yeah, fun. we'll figure something Pleasure. out. We'll do this. Yeah, this is great. And we'll like, I'm excited to, we'll, we'll chat more and do this again soon. And I think there are, you know, more exciting things, even yeah. whether it's one week or whatever. Like I think in that time, there'll be more good stuff to, yeah, uh, that we can, we can talk mm. about. So dude, this is awesome. Excited to do it again soon. And uh, yeah, uh, good chat. We'll, we'll to be continued. For sure. Take these, brother. I'm going to go. All right. Hey, you too. This. Do your thing. All right. Take these, man. Bye. All right. Peace, man.